begin to understand that in a concept of forming inside our community a united front, a black united front, which engulfs every sector, every facet, and every person inside our community working for the benefit of black people. Working for the benefit of black people. If you look into the Harlem Renaissance or if you look into traditional African culture, you will always see that art has always been a way for us to express ourselves and as a means of uh, protest. Dark-skinned people have been terrorized in this country and, and, and are. And I think that uh, Trayvon Martin, you know, experienced terrorism. It's important to keep trying to raise awareness around the issue of Trayvon Martin. One, because justice isn't just George Zimmerman being arrested. George Zimmerman needs to be arrested, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And the only way we can do that is to keep pressure on the system. Uh, it took over 40-something days for him to be arrested, and that's because of the pressure that was in the streets by you know, just the average everyday person, the grassroots, consistently protesting, doing all the things that they can do. And so we have to keep the pressure on, and just because he was arrested doesn't mean that we should stop. This has been going on um, since colonists settled here and began to declare war on indigenous people. Uh, people of, of color and uh, people of darker skin have been targeted and um, terrorized in America for a very long time. Our young people tend to respond you know, creatively a lot of times. And if we don't give them a good channel to, a good method to channel their energy, a lot of times they'll end up in places where we don't want them to be. So the arts is one of those ways that we want them to channel, channel their energy. Whether it be visual arts or spoken arts, you know, uh, musical arts, you can take something volatile and put it in a in a way where you express it that it's calmer and it's easier for people to digest through your artistic medium. When you know that something wrong is going on around, um, and there's something that needs to be done about it, you can express it through your art, and you don't have to restrict yourself. You can just really let it come out, um, and that's where change comes in its truest form when people can see it, hear it, I mean whatever way the art is, you know, whatever way the art comes out. The relationship between art and activism dates back into the uh, mid to late 1960s where you had the creation of the Black Arts Movement right after uh, El Hajj Malik, commonly known to us as uh, Malcolm X, made his transition. Artists such as Amir Baraka went to um, merge activism with art as a means to keep pushing our movement forward as a, another avenue for uh, people to express their anger and their rage into something creative. Artists can use their craft to get involved with social and political issues, uh, first of all by staying true to their artistic medium that they know most fluently and staying true to the issue that they're trying to express. Artists can use their craft to get involved in social and political issues. One by studying, learning the information, and using that to be creative. You don't have to try to hop on the new art wave to try to communicate your, 
message. You can stick to what you know well. So me, I'm a actually an interdisciplinary artist. So for me, I have many ways and avenues with communicating messages. You got artists like James Brown who made I'm Black and I'm Proud and that helped instill a self-esteem in a lot of people. Or you had uh, Claude McKay, uh, he wrote the poem, If I Must Die. Those are uh, inspirational tools that be can be used to give people another thought or look at things in a different way, or even visual artists, a lot of times people can see a painting and it can be inspiring and give them things that they never once thought of. And it also helps to keep the, um, the message alive. If you just have the formula of what's the issue, what's the expression, and how, you know, is a good way for people to receive information, I think with that formula, I think you can communicate a lot of messages using art. It's important for us to be able to share information and keep issues like this uh, alive. And that's what this space is here to do. So, uh, you know, uh, National Black United Front, you're always welcome here. And I'm, I'm glad that you're keeping this issue alive. And uh, at some point, somebody will pop off a dialogue or a discussion. A lot of that goes on here. So hopefully, everybody gets engaged and, you know, meet somebody that you don't know, introduce yourself and network. Peace. A lot of the people from the black community who, who could be really helping address these issues and who could have over the years have been equally participating in the problem. And we have a lot of status quo organizations within you know, so-called black America that are supposed to be helping out with these issues, but they're status quo organizations. So they do a lot of events, they do a lot of um, TV stuff, but as far as dealing with issues on a policy level, uh, dealing with issues on a, you know, there's consequences for messing with me level, that's not happening. And until that happens, um, we need to keep this, these kinds of issues in awareness because no real solution has been found. You know, and we can go back to the civil rights movement in the 60s and we can go right here to 2012 and ask what's the difference. It's the same thing, it's a different day. And comparing today's movement to the civil rights movement, I think one of the things we have to take into consideration is the young people today didn't necessarily face openly the issues that our elders faced and our ancestors faced during the civil rights movement. We can walk on the same side of the street we don't have to uh, hold our heads down when we look at white folks. But nowadays, we don't still, we don't have the same sense of urgency because the situation hasn't necessarily changed for the better, just the dynamics. The, the face of it has changed, but we don't come with it with the same sense of urgency. The things that were relevant to the older generation, uh, those, those who are above 50 or above 60, have come back to play in the lives of our young people that are under 21, but the young people don't understand them in the same way the people of the civil rights era did because the young people aren't connected to any civil rights or human rights movement in the same way that that generation was connected to it. 
we haven't necessarily integrated into mainstream society, but we've desegregated. And what that means is we, don't, we have a, a, a false sense of inclusion. And so we have to still keep that same sense of urgency that our elders had at that particular point in time. And I think if we can continue to work towards politicizing younger people, that sense of urgency will develop. And like democracy and a peace sign at Venice and our dreams never had a chance to grow. No, no, it never had a chance to grow. Oh, and now it's a winter. No, no, it's winter in America. Time when all the healer brothers who can help us have been killed and sent away. And the people know, the people know it's winter. It's winter in America, in America. And it goes well beyond just Trayvon Martin. All these issues that affect us within the criminal justice system or just in American society in general, unless we keep the pressure on and keep it consistent, then you will never have any change. Like the vultures circling beneath the dark clouds, looking for the rain. Yes, they were looking for the rain. Just like the cities staggered on the coastline in a nation that just can't take much more. Like the forest they buried beneath the beltway never had a chance to grow. No, I never had a chance.